Good morning. Um, a second health care worker at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital has preliminarily tested positive for Ebola. These tests will be double confirmed by the CDC um, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the, the next few uh, minutes. Uh, like, like Nina Pham, this is a heroic person. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I said like Nina Pham, this is a heroic person, a person who dedicated her life and has, is dedicating her life to helping others and is a servant leader. Uh, this is a person with their life uh, before them and a person who is dealing with this um, diagnosis with the grit and grace and determination uh, that Nina has dealt uh, with the diagnosis. And like Nina, the protocol to uh, find uh, the virus uh, worked uh, well in that within 90 minutes of her temperature, of taking her temperature, um, she was in isolation uh, in the hospital. And, and we hope that and, and pray that, like Nina, uh, she will, will um, get on a good, a good track. As you know, Nina has um, moved from stable to good and the doctor may have some, some information on her uh, uh, health when he speaks uh, this morning. So the fight against Ebola in Dallas uh, is a two-front fight now. We have 48 disease contacts that we focused on in the community that were contacts with Eric Duncan. The good news about those 48 people is they are asymptomatic and have no fever and we are at the tail end of their monitoring period. Sunday will mark the end of that monitoring period and the chance of those people uh, becoming symptomatic at this point or getting the Ebola virus is extremely remote. However, at the, at the hospital, we have a, a situation involving 77 people, two of which have tested positive for Ebola. We, we uh, are, are preparing contingencies for more, and that is a very real possibility. You can imagine the, the anxiety of the families of these 77 people. You, you can, can imagine uh, the gut shot that this is to the family that is Presbyterian, a hospital that has done a great job of taking care of this community for many, many years. Um, I, I hope this community will, will uh, rally around the human beings that are, are suffering and worrying now, even as they go about uh, their calling of serving others. Uh, with me today is Dr. Varga, the Executive Vice President of Texas Health Presbyterian, who will speak next. Um, uh, Mayor Mike Rawlings uh, will speak after uh, Do Dr. Varga, and we'll take some very limited questions after that time. We're giving you the very limited information that we have at present um, we are continuing to get an information and we'll be updating you throughout the day in a variety of ways. And we have some very important work that I need to get to quick, or that, we, that the mayor and I need to get to uh, at the conclusion of this. So, uh, Dr. Varga. Excuse me. Thank you, Judge Jenkins. <clears throat> uh, good morning. My name is Dr. Daniel Varga. I'm the Chief Clinical Officer for Texas Health Resources. And I want to thank the mayor, the judge, the CDC, state health officials, and the Dallas County Health Department for their continued partnership as we manage this unprecedented crisis. As others have said this morning, today's development, while concerning and unfortunate, is continued evidence that our monitoring program is working. Currently, as Judge Jenkins says, we continue to monitor 75 health care workers in conjunction with the state. And while I cannot discuss patient specifics, I can tell you this new patient was involved in the care of Mr. Duncan, the original patient whose passing we still mourn. Our interest at this time, first and foremost, is making certain that both our current patients receive the care they need. That will remain our focus. The health and safety of our patients and employees remains our highest priority, 
and we will continue to coordinate with officials at all levels to meet the challenge that Ebola presents to our hospital, our community, and our country. A lot is being said about what may or may not have occurred to cause some of our colleagues to contract this disease, but it's clear there was an exposure somewhere, sometime, in their treatment of Mr. Duncan. Let's be clear, we're a hospital that serves this community incredibly well, and we have for nearly a half a century. We're a hospital that may have done some things different with the benefit of what we know today, but makes no mistake, no one wants to get this right more than our hospital, the first to diagnose and treat this insidious disease that's now attacked two of our own. After several weeks of great emotion and great effort, our team's spirit is tried and tested, and the support of so many is really helping everyone to rise to continue to meet this challenge. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, another long evening and morning for many, many people. Um, we rallied together uh, and we decided that we needed to move quickly like we did Sunday morning to make sure two things happen. One, that uh, effective cleaning was done as soon as possible and two, neighbors and the citizens were communicated. It is uh, no odd thing that we decided to do this at 7 o'clock in the morning so when folks are getting up they know what the facts are. Um, it is a, a concerted effort not only um, with the county and uh, the state and uh, the city but individuals out there. This morning Chief Brown, uh, Chief Bright, our city manager uh, were all working in coordination to accomplish our goals for this morning. Dallas Fire and Rescue went to the 6,000 block of Village Bend Drive where they begin phase one of decontamination of the common areas and the areas outside the apartment. Our patient lived alone and with no pets. State of Texas has hired Protect Environmental for phase two, that inside the apartment and the cleaning of the car and the movement of the same, removing the same. Uh, that hopefully will be done early this afternoon. Uh, I personally was at the apartment uh, complex this morning and talked to uh, citizens as they were waking up and moving about, which leads us to the second part of our strategy, communication. We work closely with the apartment managers in creating a strategy that I think is working. Each apartment in their complex was, the door was knocked on and we talked to as many people that came to the door as, uh, as possible. Same time, uh, the apartment complex will be handing out uh, flyers and, and uh, information to apartment complexes nearby. So we cast the net a little wider. And then we had reverse 911 calls that went out at 6.15 this morning. Meanwhile, we continue to not only monitor the 48 uh, individuals that came in contact with Mr. Duncan, but uh, we take care of Louise and her family who are still in isolation. Uh, they are uh, asymptomatic and uh, they are doing well. And as you know, we moved uh, uh, Nina's uh, pet yesterday and are making, is, are making sure that that pet is, uh, is well and taken care of as, uh, at the same time. I think there are two things that uh, I hearken back to this. The only way that we are going to beat this is person by person, moment by moment, detail by detail. We have those protocols in place, the city and county working closely with the CDC and the hospital. 